Hello guys, in this video, I'm going to go over the top 10 CLI or command line interface um, that you can use to troubleshoot a Palo Alto Networks firewall. And before I start, I want to let you guys know that I have my Palo Alto Networks PCNSE complete course plus XM up and running on Udemy. I'm going to leave a link on the description below. So if you guys want to go ahead and take it, you can go ahead and take it. It is only going right now for $9.99, so $10 on Udemy. I'm going to leave that on the description below, which is 35% off that you're going to get. So let's go ahead and start with the 10 commands that you can use in Palo Alto Networks. Um, so the first one that I want to go over is the show system info and this one gives you a general system health information so you want to know the health information of your system um, if you want to troubleshoot right you want to know that it is running um, that is actually running correctly so if you do a show system info it is going to give you a general system health information so it gives you the host name IP address for the management interface uh, gateway the IP assignment and all that good stuff. You can see the VM mode, which is KVM, the license. I don't have any license on this. The version 8.0.5 and all of that good stuff. Um, the other one that you can use for troubleshooting is to display the routing table. And the way they do that is by doing a show. Routing. Route. And over here it gives you the it displays the routing table so it gives you as you can see it doesn't look as good as in um, Cisco um, this is why Palo Alto uses the web interface but um, it gives you like the destination the interface where it's going out the next hop and all of that um, good stuff um, also give you the flags so you can see for 20.1.0 slash 24 it goes out on interface 1 slash 3 and the next app is 20.1.1.1 and all that good stuff. Another one that you can use is uh, for troubleshooting is to view the ARP cache timeout settings. And the way that you do that is by going to show system, let's see, show system um, setting ARP. Um, let me see if I did that right. Show system. Hmm. So it should be a show system setting ARP cache, but it's not showing me that. So let's go ahead and move on to the other command, which is actually I didn't want to show you that. I want to show you the the network address translation. So this one displays the NAT policy table. Um, the first one is a show running NAT policy. So um, NAT policy, there we go. This gives you the NAT policy that we have configured. And I have two customized that I did. One is from the in to out NAT, which is going from the in zone to the out zone. And the other one is out to DMZ, which is going to the, from the outside to the DMZ. And it gives you the source destination, the interface, the destination, address and the translator IP address and this one is into our net and it gives you the source destination zone and all that good stuff um, so that is one of the commands that you can do for the net you can also test the net policy and the way that you do that is by doing the test our um, net policy and if you do a question mark you want to put the destination IP over here So the destination, um, to do this test, let's go ahead and do 20, that one, that one, that two. Then you need to specify the source. And the source is going to come from 192.168.10.2, which is from my inside. And then it's going to ask you for the destination port. And you can put destination port, let's put port 80. Um, 
let me see destination port question mark so the destination ports let's go ahead and say port 88 um, the protocol is actually now that the now the destination port the protocol is that the one they need to specify at the end and we're doing we are going to do protocol 80 and as you can see the source not rule in match to the interface to the um, not the interface to the source NAT which I call int um, I, I meant to put it into out but I put int oh, out NAT but it's into out and you can see that we were able to match that rule therefore we were able to test it um, another one that you can do for network address translation is to show the NAT pool utilization so there's two commands for that you can do the show running IP pool and that gives you the pools you can see that we are using two right now and the other one is the show global IP pool and that gives you more um, details on that um, network address translation pool utilization and the other ones that you can do for troubleshooting the first one is to ping from the management interface to a destination IP so if we do a ping host and if you want to pin, let's say the Linux device from the management interface, you can do 20.1.1.2. And as you can see, we don't have a route to uh, 20.1.1.2 from the management interface. Therefore, we are unable to do that. But that's how you're able to ping from the management interface. But if you want to ping from the data plane interface to a destination IP, you can do so. So you can do a ping source. Um, 20, the one, the one, the one. You wanna, uh, you wanna ping the host, which is 20, the one, the one, the two. So what we're saying right now is we are ping, we are pinging from the data plane. So we are pinging from the source of 20, the one, the one, the one, which is the data plane interface. We are taking interface. Um, this is inside interface, and we are pinging the destination by specifying the host 20, the one, the one, the one. We can also specify do a ping source. We can do it from another IP address. Let's specify the in. Let's specify interface one slash one, and we want to go to the host of twenty one 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 two, and you can see. So you can specify for um, any of the interfaces that you have configured in the Palo Alto networks instead of just using the management interface. And the last one is to do a show network let's see show it's a show net stats statistics yes and this one gives you uh, it shows you the network status as stats so you can see from the IP it gives you the total packets received the forward packets the incoming packets that has been discarded the incoming packets deliver the request sent out and the drop because of missing route you can see that we have 10 for the ICMP you can see that we have 20 ICMP messages received zero input ICMP message fell um, you can see that the histogram so we have 13 on reachable 7 um, echo replies um, 33 ICMP sent 0 ICMP fell ICMP output histogram you can see it right here um, and it also gives you for the TCP, for the UDP, UDP light. Um, and that is it for the commands. Um, as you can see, it is not as pretty as using Cisco because Cisco, it is uh, CLI based. Um, Palo Alto is just web based. So everything that you configure, um, every, anything that you can do from the CLI, you can, um, almost everything that you can do from the CLI, you can do it the web interface but from the web interface you can do a lot more from the Palo Alto networks and it is the opposite for the Cisco routers and switches and also for the Palo Alto uh, well not for the Cisco ASA from the Cisco ASA which is a firewall you can configure everything from the ASA and also everything from the web interface but from the Palo Alto networks you cannot um, do everything from the CLI you have to do use the web interface so if you guys enjoyed this video, why don't you guys go ahead and follow me on Twitter at CCNA Daily Tips, where I post a lot of CCNA stuff, CCMP, 
of CCMP security. I also post a lot of Palo Alto networks. And if you want to go ahead and purchase my Palo Alto Networks PCNC complete course plus XM, um, you can see that I have over 185 lectures, over 16 hours of video, and also two practice tests. And thank you for the 10 students that have bought my uh, my course. Thank you guys. Hopefully you enjoy it and give me any feedback um, because this is my first uh, this is my first networking course on Udemy. So any feedback, I will take it. And if I need to fix anything, just tell me to fix anything, and I will go ahead and fix it. If I missed something, mistyped something, or some of my videos have or could have um, information that is wrong, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that video and create the video so it can be more accurate. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you on the next one.